Hello and welcome to episode 86 of PauseCast. It is June the 14th, 2018. I am Jessica Alouette and I use she, her pronouns. And I'm Matt Henna, I use he, him. Welcome. We're in the same room again. Again? Again. What are the chances? Well, it's because we're doing an after show tonight. Well, or is it the other way around? We're doing an after show because you're... Well, I mean, I, I, it could be either, really, frankly. I mean, does time even mean anything? No. I mean, my time doesn't mean anything. I spend it all on, <laughs> I spend it all on video games anyway, so like... You can tell me both. You have work, I think? <laughs> don't you, there don't is, you there, have a full-time job? There is that, there is that. It gets in the... It's, it's, full-time jobs are just annoying. They get in the way of all the video games that you could play. Honestly, the projects that I make for myself also get in the way of those. <laughs> Have you been working on some... Uh, I've, well, there's, there's, there's D&D prep and some other side project stuff, but yeah. Um, I mean, D&D prep's fun, at least. Yeah, no, it is it is fun, although sometimes it can take a little while to get the core of a session to build around. After this one, I'll be fine because I'll be building forward, but this is sort of starting a new arc. Okay. So it's not directly building off the previous session, that's all. But um, no, it'll be good. That's... I'm um, looking forward to, to to doing it and having it be done and then moving forward prep will be a little less each week. Yeah, this is like a major session, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, but no, it'll be fun. Welcome to our Definitely Not D&D <laughs> podcast, yeah. uh, podcast, a show about video games that we play every week. Yeah. Sometimes more than, more some, than some, others. Sometimes, sometimes more than others. I think like it's been pretty light for both of us this yeah, week. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a video game achievement not like one achievement kind of thing, you, but you as finished, actually, you got a I, you got a trophy. Great job! No. <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, I, a I, bronze trophy. It was a story one. Okay. Um, no, I I finished God of War, the the story of God of War. You got which, at least a silver trophy for that, I suppose. Um, but I don't want to talk too much about it because I know you haven't played it and you're going to. Yes, I've actually like. If we hadn't already planned this, I was going to ask you very specifically to bring it back to me. Yeah, because, no, like, but I, I already have. I've been getting that inkling to... Yeah. No, thank you for leaning to me. I'm glad I got to play it. I definitely enjoyed it. It's certainly more violent a game than I would normally pick up on my own, but I'm yeah. glad for having played it. Okay. I had... What, it... what made you glad to play it? Because... I, I know you you haven't been hot on God of War, and I know you also don't want to spoil stuff. Like, is it story related stuff that's made you really glad that you played it, or are you? Hmm. Yes. Story related. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. And as well, just I mean, God of War's been around for a long time. It's well known. It's influential, I guess. So I'm partly glad for having played it for that, and sort of seeing the direction it's going is maybe some sort of indicator as general movement in video games. If that makes sense. Yeah, it's it's a a hard turn away from what video games were in like the PS3 and PS2 eras. Yeah, I, I, um, less of like a video game ass video game, and more of like a an actual like storytelling experience, and I, I guess more of a complete package than just a video game ass video game. Yeah, it's about more than ripping people in two and stomping on orbs. Though it does have both of those in it, it's also about, you know, Kratos' relationship with his son and a bunch of stuff that I appreciated being able to play through, even though there was a lot of ripping people in half and stomping on orbs. <laughs> but no, it, it was good. I'm, I'm glad I finished it. What good I'll video look forward, game it? I'll look forward to talking to you about the ending after you've seen it as well, I think. What good video game doesn't have, like, a healthy dose of stomping on orbs, though? I mean... There are a bunch that... Oh, points and points and points. Yeah, video games have all these weird abstractions, right? Like, if, if God of War hadn't already had Stomping on Orbs, and then this was the first one... You stomp, I mean, weird. they've made them look a little more in-world because they're like little crystals now instead of just like giant orbs. Okay. From what I recall from the whole heap of God of War I've played in the past. Yep, I've definitely played a lot of previous God of War games. Um, but no, I, th I think, I mean, we've moved a long way away from that sort of weird abstraction, right? Especially as that games can actually make things look like real things instead of like, I know, glowing triangles. Yeah. Because at least people can tell it's a triangle instead of not looking like a barrel or something. Yeah, people can tell it's glowing. It, it's yeah. it's probably important if it glows, right? Yeah, so it's we're moving further away from that. I've gone completely off on a 
stream of consciousness tangent here, and I don't know where I'm taking this. Well, um, God of War has been the only thing that you've played this weekend. Well, I, I also tried again the um, Teo Strain Lunar Astro Mission in Monster Hunter, and I failed again. And then I tried it again, and I failed it again. It's really frustrating, because each time I feel like I'm going to get there, and then I don't quite. It's got a very nasty, like, supernova attack, which hits a huge area. And even when I'm prepared for it, sometimes it just is too much. And often it's not. Often I'm fine. But it'll happen this one time that, oh, okay, I was stunned, so I couldn't do anything. Or I'm healing. But it's also taking my health down at about the same rate. And right. And bad things happen. So one day I'll beat that thing. But it uh, hasn't been this last week. All oh, right. Fair enough. And I also played like an hour of Just Cause 3. Because I sort of had anything to do that after seeing a little bit of Just Cause 4 stuff. Yeah. So, that was fun. It was a fun little hour. Nothing special happened. <laughs> yeah, no, no no half an hour wingsuit sessions? Nothing like that this time? Um, I did spend quite a while just hovering over a train. And going slightly faster than it, and then like slowing down to let the train catch up. That was kind of fun. Oh. That was kind of fun. I eventually got run over. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah that sounds like a video actually game the most me. the most fun thing i found was um this is the first time in a while i played it and i forgot i had a lightning gun and when you aim the lightning gun at things it takes a while to charge up and once it's charged up enough lightning shoots down at the sky at the point that you that you hit um i found out that if you just like zap a point so there's like a moment of charge up it actually ragdolls everyone <laughs> so if someone is leaning out of a window of a car shooting at you and you just zap the car the only thing that happens is they fall out of the window. <laughs> so I just got a bunch All of right. people chasing me in cars. And I was like, you know what? I want you to stop shooting me. So I just made everyone fall out of the windows. And then let them keep chasing me. And that was kind of fun. That's very good. One thing I really wish Just Cause had, though, was like a cheat or something to have it so that you would always have a level of heat. Because the game is the most fun, for me at least, when you're standing on top of a car that some rando is driving... And you're being chased by a million cops and you just shoot out their tires. But the problem is, once you shoot the tires of two or three cars, they lose track of you. So I'm really hoping that in Just Cause 4 there's a way to be like always followed. Or like an instant, like level 5 heat button? Well, yeah, I don't know about that because be- I, don't, I don't know, I've never gotten that high. I don't know what sort of dangerous stuff might come after you. Thanks. Level 3 will be good because I know they've got helicopters in and they're always fun because you can like attach cars to them and see what happens. Yeah. Um... Mm. But yeah, because Just Cause 2, I remember it was really <laughs> um, hard to have, to be on the roof of a car that someone else was driving while being chased. It, didn't, right, it only yeah. really happened to the story missions, I think. Just Cause 3 improved that, but still it's too easy to lose them. So I'm hoping, hoping that an improvement of Just Cause 4 will be that it's really easy to have a long car chase where you're standing on the roof of a car shooting at things. Because right. that is always one of the most fun things i've found to do in just cause games okay um shall i talk about what i've been playing yeah what have you been playing so this week uh has been pretty light on games because uh shock and awe e3 yeah yeah it's so nice we'll get to that every year for my birthday the games industry puts on this whole big thing where they tell me about all the new games that are going to come out one day um, Griffin, Griffin McElroy, you, you may be familiar with Mr. Griffin McElroy. My best friend. Uh, on, my best friend. Uh, on, on his podcast, Wonderful, also talked about E3 being one of his favorite things during the year. And so, like, raised the point, and I, I really, really like this, that no other industry does this. No other industry takes, a, like, ha- this big show... And shows you the entire next year's lineup. And it's like, this is what you're going to be playing next year. Films do not do that. Books do not do that. TV does not do that. A flip side of that, I think, though, is that there aren't many industries that have the same sort of level of secrecy of upcoming projects. Films don't do that, right? You know who's being hired as a director and actor on this film, that film, the other film. So um, if we didn't have that sort of level of secrecy as a common thing in the games industry, then... E3 might not need to happen, I suppose. But still, it is nice to have an event. Yeah, like have it, or just like a time where people are like, hey, yeah, like projects that are due out in 2019, here they all are right now. I guess, I mean, there are other downsides of like, hey, you don't get a whole bunch of things throughout the year to 
pace you and also i imagine it makes it near impossible to release a game in june because mm. everyone's talking about e3 and looking at e3 instead of your game that just dropped yeah maybe i mean i i definitely have had that thought as well like if you the thought of like if you send a game out during like e3 month you're basically sending it out to die right because it's just yeah everyone's talking about all the games that got announced unless it's like instead. A, end of month after e3 that's, yeah that's like a smart release window because it means that you can talk about a thing that is, like, coming in the immediate and get people excited for it. Like, the, uh, the Crew 2 had a little bit of a showing at uh, Ubisoft's conference. Mm-hmm. And I had a good time with that. It's also got an open beta that they announced that they were running. So, like, there's the, there, there are ways to get excitement around your game True. that's launching around E3. But, like, it's definitely, definitely dangerous. I guess an open beta is a bit different from a release where you want people to buy the game. Well, the release is like end of month. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope it goes well for them. Yeah, I think they. I think the open beta is this weekend. Um, I'm gonna try it out and see if there's substantial changes from the closed beta. I would imagine not. Fair enough. And yeah, you know, we'll we'll go from there. Cool. So, E3. E3. That's that's E that's E3 done. Um, <laughs> not not exactly. We'll get we'll get back to it. Um. In terms of actual games that I've played, yes. uh, I have played only really a couple of things this this week. Uh, one was a little bit of Grim Dawn during some downtime between conferences. Oh, that's that Diablo-like game, right? Yeah. Yeah. You've t- yeah. Okay, cool. It's something in the style of Diablo 2. Still fun? Still fun. Nice. Uh, still a really, really good digital pinata. It's like yeah. nice to hit a thing and loot comes <laughs> yeah. out. Exactly. Um... The other kind of major things I've been playing, Persona 5, that game is still twisting and turning its way through the story. Cool. Um, and through all the localization issues that come with it. There have been a bunch? It's still rough. Okay. Um, and then uh, Fortnite. You hear about Fortnite? I mean, all the teens like are playing Fortnite. Two weeks, sort of. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, that's such a... like. I gotta say, coming from Canada and hearing that, like, being... That was, like, coming to New Zealand was my first exposure to the term Fortnite. I'd really? Never... Nobody uses that in huh. Canada or the US. Like, it's such an obscure term. Also, I have no idea why it's the name of this game, because it has nothing to do with a Fortnite. Uh, it kind of does. Two weeks? Mm, no, but it has something to do with a Fortnite. There's building mechanics in the game, you see. Yeah, I got it. Um, and the 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 player versus environment mode that's there, like it's mm-hmm. not just the battle royale. Oh, I think everybody forgets that this other mode actually exists. I literally did. So yeah. Yep. Um, it is now called Save the World. It was the original version of Fortnite. Oh. Um, Fortnite is a PVE game where you would actually have to build fortifications against like uh, a horde of zombies. Huh. Like, pretty straightforward concept. Okay. Um, you have to, like, survive for a certain length of time or something. Then. Yeah, That's... something like that. Okay, that would make sense with a, a, a the... name that is a pun on a length of time. I can understand Yeah, that. and, like, surviving against a storm, which was also then brought over as a mechanic to the Battle Royale stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been playing Fortnite Battle Royale because PUBG decided to throw in with a racist misogynist, and I said, oh, fuck that. Oh, of course they did. Yes. They threw it with Dr. Disrespect. Oh, damn it. So, like, got 300 hours out of that game, not playing anything else. Thanks, Blue Hole slash PUBG Corp. I'm not playing your fucking game anymore. Easy. Bugger. Well, I hope Fortnite's been at least as much fun as you had I think even PUBG. more fun, nice. well, mostly. That, good then. Good. Yeah. Um, it operates in such a vastly different way and on such a vastly different pace from PUBG. Yeah. That, like... I would have thought the pacing would be pretty similar, still being a, honestly, a it, battle, ro- battle royale game. It's a bit faster because, just by nature of the map size, map oh, okay. size is um, four square kilometers by four square kilometers. Uh, wait, that PUBG make sense. is eight... Oh, sorry. It's four by four kilometers. Okay, 16 cl- square kilometers. Yep, where PUBG is eight by eight. 64, wow, okay. So, like, it's a it's, significantly yeah. larger area. Yeah, for one quarter... And that's across, like, two maps and 
then there's another one that's that Fortnite size of 4x4. Four four. Okay. The other thing that makes Fortnite's pacing a little bit, like, different, I guess, is the ability to basically get anywhere on the island, regardless of where the bus's path is. The, the battle bus, which is the alternative to the plane. What? Huh? It's a big bus with an, a hot air balloon attached to it. It's a video game ass video game. Okay. Yep. Okay. Sure. So this video game ass video game. I can um, imagine pitching that to someone. It's it's very goofy. Like, uh huh. Uh-huh. It it sounds goofy. I mean, I've seen. I haven't played Fortnite, but I've seen little bits of it, and everything you hit wobbles like jelly. So I'm I'm expecting goofy things. Yeah, it, it totally like, and, and the art style also indicates that. Like it's yeah, it's all it sh- cell shaded. Less serious, it is very destructible, which I also really really like, and it also has those building elements I mentioned. I'm dog shit at building. I can't do it. <laughs> um, Actually, it reminds me just real quick. I I was talking um, a few weeks ago to my young cousin, who I think is 13. He's been playing a bunch of Fortnite, and it was interesting to hear him say that he didn't like PUBG, which I assumed he referred to watching, because I think it's rating as high on his parents when they didn't play it. But the reason why he liked Fortnite instead was because PUBG's got blood and Fortnite doesn't. I thought that was really inter- a really interesting thing to hear. Yeah, it has like um, I, almost a light Borderlands kind of feel to it, where it's got like mm-hmm. a cartoony number that comes up when you do damage to yeah. someone, and that's kind of it. I was just interested to hear, I, I think that's the first I've heard of someone saying that they enjoyed a game compared with another one because it didn't have blood. Because, well, I don't know why because, but I mean, it's interesting to hear. Um, and I don't know if that's a widespread thing around think people his age or something or not. I know there have been a bunch of games that allow you to turn off blood when they've got them. I think Monster Hunter used to have that, actually. Yeah. I don't think it does anymore. But yeah, I just, sorry. That was just an interesting aside, but we, you can keep no, going. No, I, I, I do actually kind of, like... It's kind of interesting to think about. Um, when talking about PUBG, Terry Crews, mm-hmm. um, you might be familiar yeah. with him from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Um, Terry Crews plays PUBG, and he's talked in the past about it feeling like a like digital paintball that he can play with his kids. So right. like he's, I guess, kind of canonized within his family that the blood is actually just paint. Right. Fair enough. Um, but... Like, I could totally see how, especially younger players and their parents, would definitely be turned off by that aspect of PUBG. And the fact that it is definitively more realistic. Mm. Um, PUBG is very goofy. Like, you, again, it's it's that goofiness aspect. You use, like, a pickaxe to destroy things in the world, regardless yeah. of, like, what they are. I mean, these, these games, are, when you do a Battle Royale thing, it seems it's so clearly about winning a game not killing a bunch of people so it, it seems sensible to have a not super realistic art style to it especially if you want to if you want to attract young, a younger audience and especially if you want to be able to run your game on like mobile devices oh yeah yeah like, true fortnite's on mobile um fortnite's it's on, on freaking everything it's new skyrim <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't go that far because it's not on the previous generation of consoles as well yet um <laughs> It just actually launched on the on the Switch. And yes, I know. It's had a an interesting complication for the past twenty four hours. Is that that Sony that, said fuck all about. Is that the thing where people with a PS four account on Fortnite can't use it on the Switch or Correct. something? Correct, and yeah. people with a Switch account can't use it on the PS four. Seems like a strange thing to have with just those two specific consoles, but not others. Yeah, it's because every other network, like PC networks, Xbox, um, like mobile. All mm-hmm. of that stuff works together as one thing to allow crossplay, uh, and so it's Sony doesn't like crossplay. Sony's the the dominant figure in the market right now, and so they're playing the asshole. Uh, apparently, like mm. it's it's been more than twenty four hours. There have been hundreds of thousands of complaints lobbed at them now, and they have said fuck all. They're not saying anything to the press either wow. about this. Like they're just kind of letting it happen and not saying anything and people are asking for updates and not getting them not a great look no like it wasn't a great look in the first place when fortnite i'm gonna say quote Mm -hmm. accidentally end quote turned on crossplay between xbox i was about to ask what game was that again i wondered if it might have been fortnite it was this game Mm. the biggest game in the world effectively and they had accidentally quote i'm i'm 
skeptical that it was accidental, shall we say. Mm-hmm. But it accidentally turned on crossplay between Xbox, PS4, PC, mobile, all at once. Mobile, wow. I like, would not want to be playing on playing a shooter on a phone and throw up against... The thing that Fortnite does that's really smart about that, at least, is it does actually let you choose to only play with players on your platform. Oh, good. But yeah. you can also optionally match in to matches with PC players... So say you have a you've got a friend who's got the PC copy mm, and you've yep. got the Xbox copy, you can play together still. My only and, concern is basically if, if you've got a uh, worse input method that doesn't let you compete as well with other players and it's uh, by its very nature a competitive game. That's the only thing I'm thinking of. Of oh, if I'm on a phone, I really wouldn't want to be up against someone who's not on a phone. Yeah, but if you wanted to for mm. some reason, you can totally opt into that experience. Cool. Yeah, makes sense. Um, otherwise you are like, you don't have to, you don't have to opt into that at all. You can just kind of let it go. Mm -hmm. Um, and obviously if you're on mobile and you match in with someone on PC, uh, they are going to, that's going to include all the PC players because it's going to basically default to their network. Makes sense. It's a really cool thing. Um, anyway, back to the point, crossplay, crossplay was accidentally turned on at one point Mm -hmm. and it worked. Like it just it it just worked. Okay, like the code's not the problem. Basically. No, the code is not the problem. Like that was that was what that incident proved mm. was that it's not an infrastructure they're... thing. It's not a code thing. It's just a freaking legal thing. A, lo- a rights I thing, even, right? It's like, not even that. It's like Sony doesn't want to allow crossplay on PSN because they don't have any moderation over Xbox or PC. Is the the story they've been telling. Mm-hmm. Um, so like a cross-platform moderation system like it definitely needs to be implemented and that's something that all of the platform holders would actually need to work together on because if you run into someone that you need to report but they're on Xbox yeah, either yeah. you have to have an in-game system but what if it's something like that you need to report on a system level let's say it's like an offensive username or something mm-hmm. that someone's got on Xbox but you're on PlayStation 4 you also need to be able to report those people to xbox yeah and so now is kind of it's kind of kind of weird it's kind of a weird position that i think the entire industry is in but everybody in the industry save sony is willing to come to the table this crossplay stuff also doesn't work on minecraft another like wildly popular game especially among young audiences ps4 and xbox can't play together but xbox pc mobile and all these other platforms can still play together. Although that's owned by Microsoft, so I'm really not surprised that they worked hard to get Xbox and PC working together. Well, yeah, but like mobile's a step beyond. True. And like True. all of that, all of that working together as one thing is still a pretty impressive feat. Yeah. And so they want it to work on PS4 as well. But mm. again, it's Sony holding out. It's really a bummer. Yeah, definitely. Speaking of Sony holding out, hmm? want to talk about Sony E3 what's, and just what's, E3 in general? I mean, E3 in general, yeah. What's Sony been holding out on at E3? Well, they showed us a whole bunch of new stuff for Spider-Man. Showed us a whole bunch of new stuff for um, Ghost of Tsushima, okay. which is um, a new, new game. game. Sucker Punch, who made the infamous games. Oh, yeah. Yep. And it's a, it's a open world samurai action game. Mm-hmm. I'm getting confused between them because there's There's, been a few announced. There are three, yeah. Yeah. So there, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, Mm -hmm. which was unveiled at Microsoft's E3 from from software. Yeah. Neo 2 from Team Ninja, unveiled at Sony. Yeah. And Ghost of Tsushima uh, from Sucker Punch, unveiled at Sony. Okay. I think I haven't seen footage of that one, but I have seen... I don't know what I've seen. (laughs) <laughs> you saw Sekiro because we watched part of the Microsoft yes. conference. Before. I'm trying to think if I've seen any of Neo 2 as well, but I don't know if I have. I don't right. think I have. I think I've seen like the logo, okay. like the title thing. I heard Neo was good. Uh, I've got a copy and I just haven't touched it yet because I've got other games that I'm playing. But you've played Neo. No. Haven't you? No. I thought you played through the, and got the first ending and we're going to go back to play the other ones. You are thinking of Nier... Oh god, I am. Near Automata. Or near a tomato, depending on I was 
I was completely confused between those two things. Wow. Okay. If I played the games, I'm sure I wouldn't have made that mistake. Sorry about that. Yikes. That's fine. Okay. But no, I, I have not played Neo. Um, gotcha. Maybe if I enunciate it a little more? No, no. That was all me. Okay. That was all me. Yeah, I, ha- I have not played that game. Okay. My mistake. I was, yeah, I had been completely confused in my head from the similar names and not having actually played either. Um, from what I understand, it was pretty impressive as a showing. I haven't watched that conference in full. Right. Um, yeah, I've watched very little. I hadn't watched any before tonight. That's the problem when it, it, everything happens while I'm at work. So I'm kind of like seeing what I can keep up on just on social media and reading a few articles about it. But yeah, either that or it's happening like really stupid and, like early in the morning. Like, I, I stayed like up sleepy on... sleepy time? I, I stayed <laughs> up at... Um, for EA's conference, which was at 6 o'clock in the morning for uh, I mean, us. So I, I, I got up at like 5 o'clock in the morning to actually like get breakfast, have some coffee, and watch that show. I kind of regret it. It was, like <laughs> a, it, was a, it was a fun show to dunk on with friends. Right, but when you're the only one awake at 5 in the morning... Oh, no, no, no. We were, we were totally okay. dunking on it. Like okay. we had, I had a chat going, and oh, cool. we, we were just openly dunking on the entire performance... Uh, it was abysmal with a yeah. couple of a couple of highlights. Okay. Like um, Unravel Two, which um, Unravel was a puzzle platformer when she played as a yarn man. I was about to say it sounds like something where you play as someone made of string or something. Yeah. So, and now hey. there and now there is two yarn men. It's a co op game and it was available immediately after its showing at E three. Okay. Which was I thought really really cool to like I I love that kind of reveal. I think I've said that before on the show even. Sur- uh, surprise release yeah just a surprise like and it's out now yeah that's what happened with fallout shelter last year eh? yeah i think uh, 2016 or no even 20 maybe even 2015 it was like in the lead up i think to we've fallout already 4. established that time doesn't matter so uh, let's just true. move on sorry i forget when things happen i i think it was in the lead up to fallout 4 though like that that's what makes the most sense to me i think it's I three uh, three I years recall. older three years old at this point Quite possibly, quite possibly. I said last year because I remember it happened in the past. When was an E3 in the past? Oh, last year. Fallout 76. Oh, when they said there's a new Fallout game, I was like, hey, maybe that'll be good because I've enjoyed yeah, the same. other ones. But then everything I've learned about it is not making me want to play it. No, nope. yeah, that that game seems like not my thing. No, it's, it, I mean, so it's online we, there's pvp stuff and honestly the fallout setting as a multiplayer type game where you're not just playing with friends i struggle to think of any video game setting that is sort of more encouraging you to be an asshole yeah so that seems like a bad experience waiting to happen to me I'm I'm very glad that Bethesda had like other very exciting things to announce. Oh yeah, um, like a new Elder Scrolls game they're finally making, and the official reveal of that Starfield thing that I have mentioned a couple times. And... Yeah, I, I I think I'd be more excited about that if it hadn't been, as you've said before, an open secret. Yeah. Um, and as far as I know, we don't know anything about it still. No. Yeah. So I, it's hard to get excited about when there's no real new information. I'm glad that it's confirmed that they're making an Elder Scrolls Six game. I'm kind of surprised they don't have a name for it when they announced it. That seems a bit odd. Um, but I'm glad they're making one, and I hope it's not going to be multiplayer. Yeah, same. It's a I mean, number, it's if, a if, it, if you get like a um, cooperative explore the world with a friend, that'd be fine. That'd be a very strange direction for them to go in. Um, I don't want to see another thing like ESO. As much as a lot of people really enjoy it, it's not the Elder Scrolls game I want to play. And I definitely don't want to hear that it's anything like Fallout 76. Sounds like it will be. Yeah. I mean, like, last year Bethesda had this whole thing about, like, save single player or something like that. Where, like... Yeah. Oh, it, save player one, wasn't it? Save player one. Yeah, that was it. And it was like, yeah, we're we're super focused on, like, really good single player games. Which they very much were that year. And this year, less of a, a single player showing. But I think they still have, like... They're, they're still working on stuff that is intended for one person. Hmm. Like they've, they've got a Prey expansion, which seems oh, really yeah. cool. It's got a mix of story and randomly generated content. Interesting, because the base Prey game has none of that sort of thing, does it? Yeah, nothing like yeah, that. Yeah, no story at all. 
Sorry, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no randomly generated stuff. Nothing randomly generated. Yeah, no, it's all, it's all like a fixed experience. Mm. Where this is actually, it's putting you in the roles of five people. Oh, they, so you're not playing the same protagonist as the main game? No. Oh, interesting. It's five new characters. Uh, they are... Do you need, like, five new... mice? No. Okay, good. Um, that would be hard to Yeah, use. that would be really hard. Um, I think you switch which characters you're playing on each death. So they like, ca- Do they come back? No. Eesh. Like, you have, you have a run to try and make it, like... You've you've got to run to try and make all of these things happen, and everyone's got their own thing to do. So whether you complete the thing, or whether you die in the process, it means if you die in the process, you've got another thing that you need to go do as part of your task list Sounds because your teammate has died. Challenging. That's uh, that's as far as I understand how that mode works. I mm-hmm. haven't actually watched Fair enough. any footage of it, but mm-hmm. it was available right away. Oh, cool! And they're adding a a multiplayer mode to that game. Later this year, which is cooperative kind of or competitive? Uh, competitive. It's yeah. gonna be one versus six. Oh, so it's kind of like um. It's gonna be a, evolved kind of six thing. Six people are gonna be playing as mimics. Ah, so it's prop hunt. Yeah, it's prop hunt, <laughs> but like fucking terrifying. Yeah. Well, that's that's actually that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. For something for them to do in that game, considering the whole mimic thing. Yeah. I thought that that would be something that's really really fun. So I'm I'm glad that they've put that in. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, so that was Sony. That was Bethesda. Like stuff. That was Bethesda. You watched Sony, that was Bethesda. I'm trying to think because I'm losing track because I didn't watch any of this I, stuff. I, I, I have a couple other things I want to talk yeah. about from Bethesda. Go for New it. Wolfenstein game. Yes. Co-op. That's very exciting to me. Mm. Um, you play with BJ Blazkowicz's uh, twin daughters. So he was the protagonist of the previous two games, yes, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So... He's gone, I think, in this in You're this looking timeline. for him or something? No, no? like 1980s, and he's probably oh. dead and gone. Okay. But um, he's left a legacy with his daughters. So. Cool. So yeah, you're in... Wolfenstein Youngblood is the, the name of this nice. project. So you're in the 1980s fascist USA. Yes. Or fascist location. I don't know where. Oh, it's not necessarily in the States. I thought Wolfenstein was always USA. Uh, no. Okay. Um, I believe New Order was. was, of Nazis. New Order took place in Germany primarily. Oh, okay. And actually then also moved into like London. And Wolfenstein 2 was the first game that actually showed the US. Because the first run of wolfenstein before they remade the whole thing that was all that was all states based was it uh i think it was all just castle wolfenstein so germany huh why did i think it was all america i don't know i don't know either i think it's because you like automatically assume that nowadays because huh. I'm... yeah no that's fair I, I like you think oh it's a shooter it's probably set in the u.s it was the nazis actually that took me off yeah but whatever <laughs> <laughs> i'm not kidding getting political well Anyway, <laughs> it's, we get political here because that's what we do. Um, so that's Wolfenstein New Blood. Wolfenstein Young Blood. Young Blood. Yeah. When's that coming out? Twenty nineteen. Okay. Pretty. Actually, pretty yeah, twenty nineteen is is closer than I think, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it still feels like it sounds like it's a couple of years away, but nope. Yeah, it's it's real close. Okay. Okay. And you see, there were a couple of things. Was there another thing as well? Uh, from yeah, so there, there was the Prey DLC, there was Wolfenstein. Um, Rage 2 looks cool still. Yeah, everyone's been surprised that the Rage 2 is a thing because Rage 1 was kind of mediocre, eh. yeah. So um, it's interesting. Yeah, Rage 2. Sounds like they've tried hard to make it much better than the original, though, right? Yeah. Um, they've got Id back on board doing a lot of the combat stuff, and they've also got Avalanche. Which one's Avalanche again? Avalanche is just cause. Oh. Just okay. Cause in the Mad Max game, and they're bringing like vehicle combat and open world design to the to the Rage game. Uh, it, it looks it. I don't think it had a very good showing at E3 on the on the conference. Okay. Um, the footage that they showed was kind of middling at best, mm-hmm. I think. But a lot of people have come away with a much stronger impression. Same with a game that you're very excited for, Anthem. Yeah. Well. EA, yeah, during EA's excited conference. For. I don't know if I'd say very excited, but it looks cool. 
so during EA's conference, it was another... It was right near the end of mm-hmm. that show. And I didn't come away with a very strong impression from that that showing there. Mm-hmm. I and my like myself and other people I was watching with at the time thought it looked like soulless and that it looked like it was just like a cheap destiny rip off and I mean it, that stuff the like, comparisons with destiny definitely spring to but... mind immediately because it's a very it looks like it's a very similar type of game it can it's gonna be going for the same kind of audience. yeah but like there it was it felt like there was something missing from the whole thing uh, like a, some soul and some unique design something ver- something vague some it's something something it's hard, vague that i can't quite place but like mm-hmm. it didn't feel right but People have come away, including critics I trust, have mm-hmm. come away from actually playing the game uh, independently of what they saw in that showing mm-hmm. and have come away with a lot stronger of an impression. Okay. So um, I hear combat is a bit like Platinum Games Vanquish, which is a very, very fast paced, uh, frantic uh, shooter. Okay. Um, And that, that's like I, I've generally just kind of heard good things around the people who have played it versus the people who have just seen it. Right. Yeah. This. Yeah. This is a game that I've when Watched I saw a little bit. Well, well, I I haven't seen any of the new footage. I, when I saw it announced, um, the previous E3, um, I thought this looks like a game that is sort of like Destiny, but I would enjoy Destiny. It's never really drawn me in enough for me to get it but it's all going to depend on if i know people who are getting it and how much it costs it release or whenever i want to pick it up yeah absolutely. but it's enough that it's kept me interested so i'm glad that people have got to play it this time have thought it looked, that it was fun to play yeah I, I i'm also glad that that was the case because again that 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 initial showing really had me kind of concerned about how that game was gonna operate and mm. If it was going to be any good. Turns out it might be. So we we got something going on at least. Good. Um, That's pretty much all that was notable from E3. From EA as well. Like Fair enough. Bethesda had those few things. Uh, after yeah, that. there's really not much about most of the things they announced. Eh? Uh, not a whole lot, no. Like Rage was probably the thing that they had the most footage of. Right. And then there was like mobile games and stuff for Elder right. Scrolls Legends that... I don't particularly care about. So. Mm. Yeah, I'm I'm not really interested in non-mainline Elder Scrolls games personally. I think. Yeah. Um, Microsoft had a pretty strong showing, I feel like. I was excited to see Dying Light 2 is going to be a thing. Because, I mean, I've talked on the show before about how I kept coming back to Dying Light 1. And I've had a really good time with it. Yeah, and I'm really excited that they have Chris Avalon writing the story for that game. He's written for, like, Fallout 2... Uh, and Fallout New Vegas, Planescape Torment, uh, like, highly, highly acclaimed writer, and probably widely considered to be one of the best narrative writers in the games industry. And he's going to be writing the story for Dying Light 2, and there's, like, dialogue trees, and there's yeah, factions. Yep. We saw, basically, I think we only really saw one faction, and that was the cops, Yeah, we, we saw right? two factions. Oh, there were two? Yeah, there was the faction that the cop faction was fighting against. Oh, right. And they the gameplay demo showed that they the, the consequences of siding with the yeah. peacekeepers and with this other faction. They were going very them. hard on the idea of your choices will affect the world, which I'm always kind of eh on because I quite like games that just let you occupy a world rather, rather than have it revolve around you. I was really interested to hear that, they, that there's going to be some character customization stuff, I think. I haven't seen any of that. I've yeah, only heard it that it's there. Um, I don't like, know if that's wishful thinking on things that I haven't heard much about. I, I, I hope there's character customization. Um, I'm really interested in seeing the faction and the world stuff in Dying Light 2, though. I, I don't think that... I don't think that, like, oh, your choices revolve... Like, your choices will change the world. I don't think that necessarily means that it revolves around you. Oh, that I, th- was, I think it, it that means... was a figure of speech. I, I, I'm, I'm, right. I, I'm sure I will enjoy that stuff. It just, um, when it's raised as like a huge point about a game, I'm always kind of like, 
eh, I'm not that excited about it. I'm, I'll enjoy it still, hmm. but it's not something that is going to make me go out and buy the game personally. Right. That's all I mean. Uh, oh, that's fair. Because, like, I, th- I think for me that that sort of influence on the world is really, really interesting to see because it is not always what you would predict or expect. Right. I know, I'm know. i pretty sure I'm in the mo- minority feeling this way as well because otherwise it wouldn't make much sense for games that have this to stuff to make a big this. point of it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it totally wouldn't. So. But just, yeah, the fact that it exists, the footage they showed looked really cool. Obviously, I could see similarities with Dying Light 1. More of the same would be good. It looks like they've just added more cool stuff to it. So Parkour. Cool. And, like, there was a truck. There was a truck. Which somehow was the most surprising thing to me in that game. Yeah, but you it, were really, really surprised when I was. you saw the vehicles. Um, but I thought that was pretty cool. The environment looks neat. It, it's, what, 18 years after Dying Light 1? Yes, I think so. So, uh, presumably, the end didn't go well, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's still zombies, by the way. Yeah, still zombies, weirdly enough. Mm. Yeah, you didn't get rid of them all. Um, Cyberpunk. I haven't seen anything about this. I haven't seen any of the footage that was that was shown about this. I, I haven't about seen it. any of the gameplay yeah? stuff, but like there was there was a cinematic that was shown at the end of the Microsoft conference okay. unveiling this game. I mean, which... people sort of knew about it ahead of time. Oh yeah, like but it's it's been dormant for long enough that. People were getting antsy to right. see more more cyberpunk. Honestly, just the fact that it's CD Projekt Red is probably enough reason for me to get excited about it. Oh, yeah. As much as I didn't play through all of The Witcher because it was so big. Uh, well, I have good news. Uh, it's going to be about the same size. Cool. <laughs> uh, as, like, Velen and Skellige. Um, people, who, people who have seen it, I, I'm going to quote a Kotaku article here specifically, have said that like what they saw of gameplay doesn't look like something that's done with a lot of like pre-rendered graphics and it doesn't mm. look very far flung. It looks like something that will run on modern hardware. Like nice. it'll run on an Xbox, it'll run on PlayStation 4 and it's in that form right now. That's good. Yeah. Any um, idea when this one's coming out? Nothing. Fair enough. Cyberpunk have committed to it being a single player game, it okay. being yep. uh no microtransactions. Good. That's I mean DRM I wish free, they could go without saying. DRM free on PC. Cool. Uh, and they've also committed to delivering the same kind of expansion model that The Witcher 3 had. Okay, okay. I've uh, he- I mean, I haven't played any of those, but I've heard from several people that the expansions to The Witcher are good. The only thing they haven't committed to is a release date. I mean, fair enough if they've just announced the game officially now. Yeah. they They've said... You'll know when, we'll know when it's ready, but yeah. right now we don't have any sort of set plans. I mean, that's good. I um, I always prefer for devs to take as long as they need to make a good yeah, game. Yeah, exactly. Right? So, yeah, totally fair if enough. If this also helps them prevent crunch... Oh, yeah, yeah. That industry got some problems. Our industry has some... It's got some issues. Yeah. No, I like when Into the Breach was announced and the release date was for pretty much the entire period when it's done... I was happy about that. I mean, I was excited, but it's better that that's the way it is. And I, yeah, it's good when games don't don't overpromise because then people end up being overworked, and sometimes the game just doesn't end up being as good as well. Whether it's for that reason or other reasons, so yeah, it's, exactly. it's good to take time. Take your time. Make a video game. Hmm. Have fun. Don't work yourself to death, please. Yeah, please. Um. I think I talked about I talked a little bit about the crew too. Like not that played that enclosed. Um Skull and Bones. Do you remember Assassin's Creed 4? That game that I spoke about was it last week? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. Assassin's Creed 4? Painfully. Do you, do you I haven't actually gone back to it because it's remember how we were complaining about there being all the assassin bullshit that yes. you used to get through? It looks like Skull and Bones based on like the feedback that they got during the beta, which was like all ship combat and nothing else. Although, it looks wait, like is, isn't that a multiplayer game, though? It is... It looks like it's got co-op and PvE. Okay. Because I want to... I don't want to play a PvP pirate game. Yeah, no. I, I think that would be bad. It but, would have the same problems as Fallout. Like, pirates are notorious for being assholes. Don't encourage players to be assholes. I believe it has PvP, like, elements. Okay. Avoidable, I would hope. I would hope so, too. Um... But that game, and it's showing at E3, 
this year looked a lot stronger than it did in previous years when it was just ship combat only. There's like actual mission structure and cool. customization. This isn't, this isn't that one that I always say looks crap with only skeletons as enemies? No, that is Sea of Thieves. Right. Uh, a game that launched with no content. Yeah, okay. Because that one's got like really good water and the rest is kind of iffy. The rest, of, like it was... It, we talked about it last week even with Yardno. It's got the most beautiful water simulation. Yeah. I just get confused ever between in, all the pirate games. It, it's got the most beautiful water simulation ever put in a video game and nothing else. Mm. There's no other content in Sea of Thieves. Um, but it's not that one. It's it's actually like Skull and Bones, pirates. you said this one. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, that had a good showing. I think that that game might actually have some promise. Nice. Yeah, I still want at some point to just spend an hour, two hours, whatever I need to in Assassin's Creed 4 so that I can just go and be a pirate. What do you think about Assassin's Creed Odyssey? Do you like, um, do you like the Greeks? Yeah, no. It, um, I was pleasantly surprised when they popped up and said, hey, you can play as a man or a woman. Um, that was a nice relief. Yeah. Because I wasn't expecting that from them. No, no, I wasn't either. Um, so that's really good. They've lived up to what obviously everyone was expecting, that it's a game set in ancient Greece, so it can be gay as hell. Um, that's nice. Yeah, it, it is actually going to be gay as hell. Like... All of the romance options in Assassin's Creed Odyssey are not at all gated by gender. That's, you that's, can you can romance if you can romance someone bi, as a man, <laughs> you could romance them as a woman, um, and that applies to people of like all genders. There, like that's gonna be great. Yeah, yeah. I'm really no, excited that's, about that's that. That's really cool. I'm and really excited to be gay on the island of Lesbos. It's also been really funny seeing some of the dumb reactions to it, but uh, we don't need to get into that. <laughs> oh, my! can I tell you my favorite? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This might be my favorite as well, if it's what I've seen. The Go ancient on. Greeks followed Christianity. Yes, that was the one I was yes, thinking of. Yes, all right, yes. <laughs> yep, yep. Hundreds of years! <laughs> How do you fuck that up that badly? <laughs> Oh, well. The ignorance of gamers never ceases to amaze me. Nope. Uh, amaze is the wrong word. Bewilder. <laughs> it is bewildering how ignorant gamers are about yeah, I mean, everything. There's just too much to unpack. I don't even want to start. With like, even just within gaming as an industry... Gamers I'm, are I'm just wrong thinking of, about I'm just everything. Think, oh, I mean, that is objectively true. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking of just this one instance of this one game. And there's so much. There's dozens of ignorant takes. Yeah. Cheaper by the dozen. <laughs> Three. It looks like that... So... I'm glad that they're continuing the same sort of vein as Assassin's Creed Origins, because though I didn't play that game except like a little taste, because my brother owns it, I've heard great things about it. That game's good. Yeah? Yep. Um, and the other stuff also seems cool, so should be a good time. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Um, yeah, um, this, uh, this might be the Assassin's Creed, game I, uh, Assassin's Creed game I picked up, like I mentioned last week. They make so many Assassin's Creed games, I feel like I can just wait until one that I'll enjoy and then pick that one up. This might be it. Yeah. It's got like a, a Witcher 3 like dialogue system yeah, I've heard and they, that. they've like really been influenced by those games. Like I, I also think Origins might be worth picking up as well. Well, they're expensive is the other is the oh, flip side I mean, of it. I got a copy. <laughs> you just finished I, I, God of I, War. I, I could borrow a copy from my brother as well if I really want to play it. Yeah, like I, I would recommend it because it also takes from that Witcher 3 like quest system and like does its own spin on it it's got a really interesting setting there is a lot to see and do it's gorgeous you've just reminded me because um on two threads one games i should play and two being gay in video games yep um last of us part two. Oh yes so i should go back and play last of us because that's a scary game i didn't get the whole way through but i do own it for ps3 so i should go and fully play it but last of us part two is been shown off it's and gay it, i mean we've known for a long time that ellie the who's the main protagonist in last of us part two is gay yep um but it was like all front and center and that's really cool yeah that was actually like shown on screen um i've also seen um some of the on-screen stuff from uh assassin's creed odyssey of the like queer romance mm -hmm. it's very good good there's 
there's some really really like infectiously cute dialogue actually yeah like I, I i saw it and i actually called ash over as soon as i saw it and i was like you have to see how cute this is it's such a cute it, like it's such a cute follow-up um nice i actually i can i can remember the specific dialogue yeah, yeah. so like um cassandra starts flirting with this other character. that's that's the main the, character the, right the protagonist that you're playing the woman main character mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cassandra's flirting with another character, and um, um, Cassandra says about them that um, they have so much in common. And this character asks, "Really? Like what?" And mm-hmm. sh- an option that you can choose in the dialogue is like, "I I don't really know. I just thought that was what people said to each other. I wasn't actually <laughs> expecting a follow up." <laughs> it's it's so it's so cute. <laughs> honestly it, it's it's really great i'm i'm thrilled that that is the that's where we're going with this series <laughs> it's just to be like really really cute and gay so assassin's creed games have been pretty annual is this got a release date uh yes october oh it's pretty soon yeah like it's wow. coming out this year cool um it is back on the annual cycle i think i mentioned that last uh week when we talked okay. about the odyssey leak um that sounds right. Yeah. So that that game's coming out this year. What else what else has there been that, that's been shown? I think that's most of all the stuff that's got me excited. Yeah, I th- I think that's the same for me as well. There's some other stuff like Halo is still alive, but I'm not really excited about that personally. Mr. Halo. Actually that's right. Uh. There's something I didn't like. Mm. Um uh Monster Hunter crossover with Final Fantasy fourteen. Oh yeah. Where they're bringing in a monster from Final Fantasy and putting it in Monster Hunter. I mean, Monster Hunter's always had wacky crossovers, and that's fine, but I'm annoyed that they're pulling a monster in from a different game. Because one of the best things about this franchise is that they've got cool and original monster designs, and I feel like this is sort of taking the place of a new original or from pre- a previous Monster in the Game monster. It also feels like kind of a cop-out when they worked so hard in Monster Hunter World to make everything feel like part of an ecosystem, and they did so well at it. And now... A meteor falls, I guess, and there's a monster from Final Fantasy in it. Yeah, and it just feels weak. I don't know. I'm, I'll play it. I'll probably enjoy the fight, but I'm annoyed because it feels like a lost opportunity when they're adding a new monster. And I don't think they've done a crossover quite like this before. They they did have a like an obscure mobile spin-off game where they had some really weird stuff where they had monster subspecies that were also like pop culture references, and it looked bizarre and. I don't think anyone really played it. But aside from that, I think this is the only thing like this that they've done. Okay. Although, I mean, at least the behemoth doesn't look goofy or anything. And if it hadn't been in Final Fantasy, it could look like it fits in Monster Hunter. So it's not like a... Um... It's not like a visual disconnect? Yeah. It's what's the... it's not like a Kingdom Hearts kind of thing. Um, so that's something. But still, I don't know. I'm sad that they're adding the wrong type of monster. I don't know. Oh, I'm still I'm hoping they'll announce more stuff because the game there's been every Monster Hunter game has like an ice zone except Monster Hunter World hasn't and it feels like it would be such an obvious thing for them to announce hey we're adding an ice area with some new monsters so I'm hoping there'll be something but who knows we'll see all in good time mm. gotta be patient um shall we wrap up with what you've been what you're looking forward to playing this week Oh, what am I looking forward to playing? If anything. I know you're busy. I mean, I've finished God of War. And yep. I've handed it back, so I'm not really playing that. I don't know. I'm not sure what I'll end up playing this week, honestly. We'll see. We'll see what I feel like. Because, I mean, I had a spur of the moment Just Cause 3 thing earlier. Yeah. I've kind of fallen off Battletech for now. Once they release their patch, whenever that will be, they've said July or June. So it could be soon. It could be a month away. Yeah. I'll probably jump back on that because the difficulty options they said they're adding, I think, is the kind of thing I'm, I've been waiting for to have another playthrough. I'll probably try the Lunastra mission in Monster Hunter again. I might fail again. Who knows? But yeah, no, I'm, I don't really have any particular games I'm expecting to play this week how about you i think the only like the only real things i'm thinking about are like Fortnite and persona at the moment fair enough i got i got enough twistiness and i'm hmm. only a couple of days away i think from entering the next major dungeon in persona real life days 
Um, in game no, days. In game days. So like, probably once you leave, I'll spend twenty minutes doing that. And, oh yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm. I wonder. I, at some point, hmm. I want to try The Last of Us again. Yep. It's just. That's quite an intense game to play. It can get scary, and I get scared easily. So it's not a game I can just spend a bunch of time each evening playing through, and I'm worried about losing momentum. So at some point, I'll play through that. I just don't know if it'll be this week. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Well, um, that's going to do it for this episode of PauseCast. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to us. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, we have a few ways that you can do that. One of the first is you can just rate and review the show. Every time that you do that, it helps us out a whole lot, uh, and we would really appreciate it. You can also share the show with your friends, your neighbors, and people that you think would like the show. We would really appreciate you doing that as well. You can also support the show financially by going to our coffee or our Patreon. You can go to our coffee at bit.ly slash pause coffee, and that will take you straight to that page. You can also go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash show. Thank you very much to all of our patrons. Sammy, Mary, Para, Dove, Cory Bat, Residoke, Ash Yee, Laminated Moth, and Gray for their continued support of the show. Mark, where can people find you online? I'm on Twitter at HonestUniverse, and I write a blog as well, though not about video games, at HonestUniverse.com. How about you? Uh, you can find me online at bird.school, and you can find me streaming on Twitch at MaximumGun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. <laughs> listener supported. I think you're going to get sued now. Uh, probably. I've made that joke once, at least. <laughs> um, you're the cadence. Perfect. MaximumGun.org. <laughs> Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. The Canadian accent helps, I think. I, I think it does. I don't think you'd be able to do it. No, I you... couldn't pull it off at all, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, thank you to Leon as well for the use of our theme song, <laughs> Honey Milk Island. You can download some of Leon's music for free at soundcloud.com slash L-E-Y-A-W-N. And that is going to do it for us this week on Pausecast. Again, thank you so much for listening. We really, really appreciate it. Until next week, thank you again, and burn up. Bye.